Regan Slaymaker for International Boxing News. And I have the pleasure to be joined by the WBA International Super Flyweight Champion, Shannon Ryan. Shannon, how are you today, mate? I'm good. I'm good. As I was just saying, I've just got informed training and um, it's going so well. I'm in, a, I'm in a good place. So I'm very happy. Perfect. Glad to hear. How, how is camp going in, in general for your, for your fight with Emma Dolan? Yeah, do you know what? Really good. Uh, we've had some really good sparring. The weeks are flying by. Um, you know, we've got four weeks left of training and then obviously the fight week, which is, um, for me, it's gone so, so quick. But it's going good. Definitely, mate. Before we get into into that into more detail, I do want to touch on kind of your fight with uh, Jasmina Zapto Koshner, I mean, in February, I think it was. I mean, where well, you picked up the WBA international title as well. You picked up a bit of a horrible cut as well, mate. Yes. Um, I think I think I ran it. I think I ran into you in Sheffield, and I said, "Kind of, how is the cut healing?" You just pointed at it because for a split second, I remembered that it's in the middle of your forehead. Uh, yeah, but you, yeah. you said what? You said what? Do you think? But kind of, how do you reflect on kind of that fight back in February? Yeah, do you know what it was? Um, it was different. Um, you know, I was really unwell in that fight, so from round one, I could feel it. Um, and then obviously the cut in round eight and I was like, oh, like, could this get be any worse? But do you know what I'm how that whole fight played out? I'm so glad it did because you can't get experience from a cut. You don't just get cut to to gain it to to then in training, for example, to get experience from that. So, you know, it, it taught me a lot and it showed me a lot about myself. And, you know, as fighters, we can all say, yeah, I can, you know, bite down on the gum shield and go for it. But can you unless you're really in that situation and I feel like I didn't panic once and I handled it very well so um yeah like I said it was a different fight I was unwell then the cut happened but I'm glad it all went the way it did definitely kind of you just touched on there but kind of obviously fighting with illness is never nice but you've you've done it now fighting with the cut as well is never nice but you've done it now how important do you think kind of in the context of that fight will be for the rest of your career moving forward yeah, you know, it was, um, if I can do that, then then I can go into any fight. However, you know, I, I wouldn't possibly go into another fight sick again, but I'm glad I did it to know, to know that, you know. Um, I'm someone that will never back down and I don't ever want to not take a fight. But, you know, of course there comes a point where if you are extremely ill, then I, I totally understand. Um, but like I said, I got the job done. Um, still box very well, not at my best. Um, but still displayed a good performance. Definitely. And you got the win as well. And you kind of, you guaranteed kind of the rescheduling of the fight with Emma Dolan. I mean, before that fight with Jasmina, you made it very clear to me in our interview that that was the fight that you wanted next. It's here. June the 22nd, British and Commonwealth titles on the line, mate. Yeah, it's so exciting. You know, we, we me and Emma, we were going to be the second females to fight for the British, but now we're the third. Um, but nonetheless, it's still history in the making as it's the first females to fight for it in the super flyweight division. Definitely, mate, kind of. We'll, we'll touch on that. You mentioned it. I mean, how important is it kind of for you to be a be a part of that history to for the first the first champion all going your way June the 22nd in the in the division as well, making history there? Yeah, it's so important. And do you know what? If we touch on on women's boxing, it just goes to show that it is rising and it will continue to rise um, because, you know, they weren't able to do the British before because there wasn't enough females in, in Britain. Um, there still is not enough, you know, to, to you know, defend it however many times you may want to defend it. But um, it's nice and it's nice to see that there's so many more girls being involved. And if there's... In 2024, we're fighting for the British now. How many more females are going to be involved in the future? So it's really exciting and it's nice to kind of be on that path where other females will look and be like, wow, they did that. So I'm going to try and do that too. No, definitely. There is an exciting initiative that you were a part of uh, a couple of weeks ago that I want to touch on, but we'll get on to that in a minute as well. I mean, th this fight with Emma Dolan, I mean, it's becoming a little bit of a grudge match. I think the uh, <laughs> the the thing that Matram posted it that it's done in the rounds on socials. It, it's a uh, but it's definitely it's a it's a fight that you're confident in going into w winning as well. Yeah, I'm I'm really confident. You know, I believe in myself, my team, my ability, um, and just my boxing, my IQ, and just how I am as an individual. Um, I just believe that I'm levels above Emma. Don't get me wrong, she does do some good stuff, but um, I just believe I'm the better boxer, the better fighter, and that will show on the night. Definitely. And kind of where, obviously, where when you kind of had that face, the face, obviously, it did get a bit heated. Kind of mm -hmm. where, where is that kind of all stemmed from? Um, it was more her interviews that she done. Um, the, the, the first initial one when we was meant to fight last year, 2023, 
when she said that I've done nothing. And that for me is disrespectful because everyone knows I've been in the in the in the sport for such a short amount of time. And I believe what I've done is incredible in that amount of time. You know, August 2018 as an amateur, and I had my pro debut in March 2022. I've got the best promoter, Eddie Hearn. I'm signed with Anthony Joshua's company, 258. I've just won the WBA International. I was with Sky Sports, now I'm with Eddie Hearn. Um, you know, I won the Women's uh, women's Box Cup as an amateur. I was going to go on to do the elites, and there's so much more. So I feel in that amount of time, as fighters, yes, call people out. I understand the sport is a business. Get the hype going. But you can call someone out and still kind of credit what they've done, regardless. Um, so it was when I heard that, I just thought it was a bit disrespectful. And then when she sat at the table, she then went on to say, I'm a great fighter, I'm not dumb, this, that, and the other. So um, that for me, you're nervous. So I asked her if she's nervous because now the tables have turned, you've you've changed your tune. Um, so I just asked her and then um, she said to me, oh, so you watch my interviews? But yeah, I do, I'm a smart fighter. I watch your interviews because I can see how nervous you are when you're talking in your interviews. Um, and you know, other fighters do that too to kind of assess, assess their opponent. So, um, so yeah, I just thought, let me just ask her and it went from there. No, definitely. I mean, and also fair play for backing yourself also on the stage, mate, especially when you know the achievements that you've won as well, mate. You you just touched it there. I mean, in March, it marked two years since your professional debut. I mean, how do you kind of reflect on your journey or maybe include the amateurs like you just touched on from, from then until until now? Yeah, it's been an incredible journey, you know, a lot of twists and turns. Um, but that's what makes it so special for me. And, you know, I've, I've said this in a few interviews before, but, you know, I feel like I was boxing was never my dream, was never my goal as a child. Um, and I always said I was never destined to be a boxer. But now being where I am, I've actually changed that perspective. And I feel like I was always destined to be a boxer. My route just had to be a totally different than than others to get me to where I am today. No, definitely. Um, and long may it continue as well, Shannon, as well. One thing, uh, obviously, relating to what you said about kind of the, the female talent pool in boxing and kind of growing that, uh, yourself and Ellie Scottney supported the all-female amateur show led by uh, this girl, Cam Box, the, a few weeks ago. I mean, for those that don't know, kind of shed a bit more light on kind of what this initiative, initiative do and kind of how important are these initiatives kind of growing the talent pool of female boxing moving forward as well? Yeah, I was so grateful to to have attended and be invited down. Um, and the initiative is, you know, how many girls were there to box? And it is just to show that female boxing is on the rise. Um, and there were so many girls that just took part. And even the taking part is, you know, can be scary enough. To, so to see young girls through to young teenagers, adults get in that ring um, was phenomenal. And the BBC were there. Um, I think ITV were there. Um, I could be wrong, but definitely the BBC. And um, yeah, just to shed a light on on female boxing and to have an initiative for the girls. Um, so then they feel involved, feel welcomed. And, um, you know, it's not so daunting. Definitely. Do you think kind of that's how the talent pool will eventually grow? Obviously, obviously, you guys in the professional code, you guys are pioneering the sport in that sense. But that grassroots, that's where that's where the growing talent pool will come from as well. Yeah, definitely. I think when people see that and then they see like myself and Ellie Scottney, you know, turning up, it will make it will help to make other girls want to be involved. And that's what we want. It's just more girls involved. Like I said in my interview with the BBC, they asked me, is there enough girls? And I was like, no, there can never be enough. Um, so, you know, we're just trying to, sh uh, to shed that light to get more girls involved and just to show them that, you know, you are supported and it's not as scary as it may seem to 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 girls that are wanting to get involved. No, definitely. And like like you said as well, where where kind of the British and Commonwealth titles, uh, kind of the domestic titles are growing, the talent pool is, is growing, but it does need to grow as well. I mean, Shannon, we've absolutely breezed through my questions, mate. Thank you again <laughs> for giving me your time today. Um, no have worries. You got, have you got any final words heading into your British and Commonwealth Super Flyweight title fight on June 22nd, mate? Yeah, no, just um, thanks to everyone for their continued, uh, continued support. Um, you know, people that buy tickets or if they watch online or just support my socials that's always fantastic and obviously my sponsors because without them it's very hard to do what we do every single day and um you know those are o2 everlast knocko ga therapy local tool hire and um yeah they're all incredible so yeah thank you no, they definitely are perfect shannon ryan thank you very much today mate and uh yeah see you in no birmingham worries. on june the 22nd brilliant see you there Cheers. thank you